microbiome, we lose diversity when we lose estradiol. To your arms, your wrists, your leg, you want to alternate spots. Today we're going to do a little show and tell, and I'm going to show you all of the different ways that you can take hormones. There's a lot of different options. So I'll do another video on what is not hormone replacement. Let's start with vaginal estradiol. This is a hot topic right now because there's a lot of arguments online about what is low dose estradiol that stays localized. And when we have to worry about estradiol that you take vaginally that is not localized, it's systemic. So you can take estradiol in a syringe like this and apply it to the vagina right? The vagina is very vascous. So if it's a higher dose, it's going to not only absorb it and make it systemic, but it's highly absorbable. So systemic levels can get quite high, but it's all about the concentration. So that's, we're talking, you know, 0 0.5, 1.0 and above a vaginal estradiol making a systemic impact. But when we're talking about low dose, localized vaginal estradiol. It can also be estriol. Um, but this estradiol is only 0 0.01 and you can apply it with a syringe and it is very low dose. It's localized. So it helps prevent urosepsis, which is a cause of death among elderly women, which I find to be so sad. It helps maintain your musculature and it helps um, the bacterial balance. So UTIs are really common in perimenopause and menopause. And that's due to the lack of our vaginal microbiome. We lose diversity when we lose estradiol. Um, and I recommend replacing estradiol low dose vaginally uh, early 40s, because just like the skin on our face, it becomes loose. We lose collagen and elastin. The same thing happens with our vagina. And we don't want saggy vaginas, just like we don't want saggy faces. So that is the difference in vaginal estradiol. And you'll see that online a lot lately. Also, you can do vaginal, this is Quicksilver's. Um, vaginal beauty serum, and it has um, estriol, which is more of a lubricant rather than thinking about the musculature like estradiol does. And it also has DHEA, um, which is great for the musculature. So we want to preserve the integrity externally and internally of our vagina for not only cosmetic reasons, but to prevent life-threatening issues like UTIs and urosepsis later in life. Um, so we've got DHEA, estriol, estradiol. Um, this also has hyaluronic acid, which is great. Other ways to apply if we want systemic estrogen, okay? Now we aren't talking about just localized vaginal estrogen to help our vagina, we want systemic impact. So again, you can take a higher dose cream and apply it to the vagina that will give you systemic effects. You can also apply um, a cream to your arms, your wrists, your leg, you want to alternate spots. And this is, um, you click it. So you'll say, you know, one click or two clicks, you take off the top and you turn it and you follow your practitioner's guidance of how many clicks. And estradiol has about a six hour life in the body. So you're going to take it in the morning and then again, late afternoon. Um, and again, the concentrations depend on what your levels are and what's been established between you and your practitioner. You can also take estradiol um, with injections and that could be daily or it could be a couple times a week. Some people like injections if they're having an issue with transference to young children or pets. So you want to be careful if you have young children that if you're applying your estradiol cream, let's say here, then you really want to be washing your hands and then put on a long sleeve shirt so that when you give a hug, especially, you know, with little ones, we don't want to be giving them hormones. You want to be really conscious of that. 
Um, and we don't want to be taking estrogen orally because it increases our risk of blood clots and it's inflammatory. It has to go first pass, first pass through the liver. Um, and it can convert highly to estrone, which is E1, which is the most inflammatory estrogen. Um, and then we also have estrogen for our face. So estrogen is amazing for our skin. It is one of the reasons why women, you'll see such a drastic difference cosmetically um, in a woman's face as far as sagging goes um, and texture. The elastin and collagen, again, um, is due to the lack of estrogen. So we need it systemically for sure. Taking topical low dose estrogen on your face isn't going to solve that problem, but it certainly helps. Um, this one I love it. It also has hyaluronic acid and, and GHK CU, um, which is the, a copper peptide, which is really amazing for skin. Um, and we need to give our receptors a break. So I don't use estrogen on my face every day of the week. I use it every other day, every two days. Um, and the same thing with the low dose vaginal localized estrogen. Um, that's about it every other day or every two days. So our estrogen receptors need breaks. That is why, you know, we also alternate places on the body. That's pretty much all the ways to take estrogen. And there's a lot, as you can see, this is why it's really important to do your research and work with a practitioner and figure out what method works best for you and your lifestyle. Um, progesterone is an interesting one and you'll see a lot of debate about that. So the main kinds of progesterone is we'll have capsules. We have oral capsules. Um, Prometrium is just goes by 100, 200 milligrams. It's not sustained release. It is, um, it has uh, food dyes in it, which are yay um, being banned by the FDA, but it's going to take a couple years. So even though Prometrium is bioidentical, I still don't love it. Um, I like it to be compounded. So it's really clean. And I also like a sustained release. So when you take an oral progesterone, it really has a strong impact on allopregnenolone. It's going to make you feel tired and even sedated. So, um, you know, that can often hit women early on and then they wake up later in the night. So you want it sustained release. Um, but also as much as we hear about progesterone for sleep, estrogen plays a huge role in sleep. So progesterone is more of sleep onset and estrogen is more staying asleep. So even with a sustained release oral progesterone, you can still wake up in the middle of the night if you don't have enough estrogen. Um, so oral progesterone, it's um, that's going to protect your uterine lining. If you're taking estrogen, it's really important that you take um, progesterone. So we know with oral progesterone, that's going to protect your uterine lining, but it can be too much of a sedative for women. Um, I'm one of them. My body really doesn't like oral progesterone. I notice on my aura ring that my HRV gets low. Um, similarly to when I take melatonin, which I don't do that much for the same reason, um, because it sedates me and I don't get a restful sleep and I don't get a lot of deep sleep. Um, there is topical progesterone, which you will hear that the molecule is too large to be absorbed transdermally. I have not found that to be true depending on the product. So Quicksilver, um, their professional line has an amazing um, progesterone that I know is absorbed. I know because my clients report the same thing that I report, which is um, when I use it, I can feel it right away. You can't measure topical progesterone. So doctors are concerned and rightfully so that if you're on estrogen, but you can't measure levels of progesterone that's taken topically, it doesn't show up in serum levels the same way that taking it orally does, then how do we know that we're protecting our uterine lining? And if you're on HRT, you really do want to be getting ultrasounds and looking at your uterine lining 
you know, at least once a year, it's more if you feel like if that's an issue for you. Um, but the topical um, progesterone is actually quite good and it has less of a sedative effect, but it has to be compounded or a high quality product um, that you can trust and you need to monitor. Uh, but for me personally, what I like the most, and it has its cons, are vaginal suppositories. So vaginal progesterone is pretty great because it goes directly to the uterus, right? It's a, getting to the source. This It's addressing the concern um, of what we're thinking about protecting, you know, and making sure our uterine lining is properly thinning and shedding each month. Um, vaginal is great. The downside is it's messy, um, but we only take it two weeks a month. That's another video of how to properly take HRT. I'm just giving you the different methods, but, um, progesterone is only two weeks a month. Um, so especially this might be TMI, but like I work out really early in the morning. I usually go around five o'clock in the morning. And if I have a suppository in, right, you use the restroom and a lot of it will come out. A lot of it's been absorbed, but it can still be kind of like it when you're trying to work out. So I don't know what to tell you. You can put in an organic tampon to help. Um, but that is one of the drawbacks. Okay. So that's estrogen, progesterone, DHEA. Um, and then we have testosterone is, um, it can be taken, uh, topically. So in a cream or serum, uh, and, or injections, we don't want to take testosterone orally, because again, that is inflammatory. So when we're thinking about testosterone, we are only thinking about injections or topical. We're not thinking about pellets because pellets can get you like supra physiological levels. So way, way too high right at the beginning and then way too low right at the end. And a lot of women will get like a pellet high and feel like the pellets are the best thing ever. And oh my God, I can't live without my pellets. Um, but we don't wanna be high and we are not meant to have T levels um, in the ranges of like 1,000, 1,100 like a man would. So we want to be very careful. And this is one of the times when I really love the Dutch test. So a lot, there's buzz a lot all the time about how the Dutch test is like a money grab by functional practitioners. And yes, I do think there is some abuse going on there. Um, and I don't use it all the time, but if someone's interested in taking testosterone, I do highly recommend running a duct panel so you can see if they favor the DHT um, more androgenic pathway. Because for some women, even when their testosterone is low, if they're favoring the DHT pathway, they can lose hair and get acne and their voice can deepen, their clitoris can get enlarged because it wants to be a penis. Um, and these things are irreversible. So if you don't know how you convert testosterone, you really want to take a look at the pathways. Um, and DHEA, I do like it vaginally and it can also help orally, but 25 milligrams is often what's offered. And it's really way too high for most people. Five milligrams, 2.5 to five milligrams uh, orally of DHEA is um, typically a great amount. Okay, so I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. I'm looking around to see if there's anything else I'm missing. Oh, I do have a... Um, vaginal progesterone, which looks a lot like the vaginal um, estrogen. So it's not a suppository, it's a vaginal cream. So pr for progesterone, we've got vaginal cream, vaginal suppository, oral and topical. Um, and then estrogen, we have a whole hell of a lot of options, but hopefully that helps give you a little information about what your options are.